Okay, today I am working on this Sanyo 26 inch LCD TV. It's a CE26LC81-B. However, I notice made in Turkey. This is a Vestel set. Nothing Sanyo about this one. Anyway, the problem is um, turn the set on. And we get a kind of lit up grey screen. And I'll power cycle it rapidly. You can see the pattern changes almost every time. Very strange. So there's an issue somewhere we're powering on. Oh, and we've got a signal frame there. No signal frame, but notice it's uh, frozen. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken the case off and I've removed all but two screws attaching this frame assembly here to the LCD panel. By the way, the LCD panel on this is a Chime Opto. L C uh, it's a visible here. V two six zero B one. Now, as soon as I heard, as soon as I read that number off, I'm thinking I fixed two previous V two six zero B one panels with tab bonds. So it's now actually working, but uh, this is going to appear in the frame. Oh, let's tilt the camera up a little. Okay. Um, so you can see it's working. The timer's ticking down. If I just flex the panel slightly here. There, I don't know if you saw that little judder. There you go. Every so often, just get the right point. Every so often. And basically, bring this side. Basically, um, on all the Chimo panels I've fixed, it's the tab bond on this side that goes wrong. And it tends to cause a very similar effect. So, cheap ass, crappy LCD panels then are the cause of this failure. Let's just bring up something bigger on the screen menu. Let's see if that's more visible. It's annoying because. Uh, there we go. It's annoying because um, I've actually accidentally fixed it. Oh, there we go. I've accidentally fixed it uh, by just taking it apart and putting it back together. So at least I know it's a tab bond and that it's reasonably fixable uh, because I've had a good success rate with the uh, panels I've fixed with tab bonds before. So what you need basically to do is this cheap plastic frame you've got to take this off there's some mounting points here these are screwed on I took that off just undo all these basically you just want to have this metal LCD panel module and you want to flip it over okay so this is basically what you want to end up with um, then you've got some screws around the edge just take all of those off now this is the LCD glass really be very careful of it because if you crack it game over the panel is dead. So um, take these screws off, lift up really carefully, careful of any tape around the edge that may be securing the parts together. Okay, so this is where next. Now, if you've left all the boards on the back and you're on a cloth surface like I'm on a bed here, you'll then be able to um, work on it powered up. It's a slightly lit up grey screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly press on these tab bonds. Okay. Nothing. 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 Oh, look at that. And uh, basically it's that one there that's causing the problem. Now, I've done, with the help of a friend, about uh, yeah, two other Chime 26 inch 720p screens with bad tab bonds. It's always been that tab bond, 
also had a look at Sony uh, based on a Samsung 40 inch screen unfortunately that one ended badly because we cracked the screen while we're working on it but um, that was that tab on there gone bad uh, a 42 inch LG full HD uh, half the screen scrambled that was that tab on there uh, any others yeah I had a 37 inch Philips um, that tab on there it's a pretty consistent failure so what is going wrong with whatever this tab does because it always it's the only one that seems to fail I mean I've heard of some people having these ones on this side failure fail but it's almost always this one it's such a strange fault but anyway uh, I'll just turn it off right now because it's probably not a good idea to leave it on without the heat sink and that cools these ICs but basically um, I'm going to apply a little shim so have a little look at the uh, metal frame uh, see which way it goes around uh, a minute. there's usually a mark on it that says top or something Hmm. I think I think it's that way on. But anyway, so what you see you've got is you basically got metal frame here. I've got to apply pressure here. There's this little black strip here. I think that's supposed to do the job, but it doesn't do it properly. So I'm just gonna apply a little shim there. Piece of rubber or something, I'll tape it down. But interestingly you notice that this bond's actually quite flexed. The, this is a little flex, this is quite flat, this is quite flat, this is a little flexed and this is also a little flexed, but this is definitely the worst, it's quite badly flexed so I wonder if it's sort of like a, a design error um, but it's consistently affected loads of Chime screens I've seen lots of other people with this problem on a bad caps net forum and other screens um, in particular 46 inch and uh, 52 inch Samsung display panels uh, suffer from tab bond issues too and um, some sharp TVs suffer from tab bonds and it's that tab bond the actual sharp LCD panel um, so what is it that's failing so consistently on these TV screens is it something related to perhaps lead free solder see You've got these little bondings on the side, but you notice there's no PCB connected to them. They've just got a little chip on them, and these are responsible for driving the rows of the panel. So basically, uh, each bond here loads a sixth of the screen. 1,366 pixels, and each pixel's got three sub-pixels, red, green, and blue. So um, I think we've got something like 5,000 pixels that way. Oh, maybe 4,000. Um, so each bond is handling a considerable number of pixels and they load a group and these drivers select the row by making it negative and deselect all other rows by making them positive. So these drivers need a clock signal for the position they should be at, a reset signal so they know when to go back to the start, a sync signal of some, of some sort. They also need a positive 25 volt to deselect the row and a negative 10 volt or so to select the row. So what I'm suspecting is happening is since this bond is the closest to here and there's no PCB here, they're actually sending the power signals for these drivers and the clock and data signals through here. Which means this tab one will run slightly hotter than all the others. The question is that shouldn't be drawing much power so I don't know why it fails much because um, I've never heard of these failing in theory they should be under similar stress because um, the signal chains into here and it goes through this IC and then goes to the next one and to the next one um, on these panels I believe it may be that they're in parallel so each is only taking a third of the work uh, and also interestingly is despite this chip here handling nearly a thousand lines uh, columns these chips actually only handle about two or three hundred um, 
So something about these is a lot less dense in terms of um, of driving the LCD panel. They can't, for some reason, make them more dense. Whereas these newer panels I've seen, which is two tab bonds for the whole screen. So I don't know how they manage that, but obviously t two tab bonds doing the job where six used to is going to leave a lot more stress on those bonds. So I wouldn't be surprised if in the future we start seeing them failing a bit more. Uh, this is a 720p panel, but it also affects 1080p panels. It tends to affect 1080p panels a lot more as um, I've only seen Chime 26 inch screens with this type of failure. Um, 26 and 720p screens like these uh, whereas all the other TVs are always 1080p when they fail um, which again is a lot higher density so one of my theories is something related to the uh, bonding on here due to drawing more current from these drivers something there is uh, causing it to heat up and perhaps lead free solder failing on the bond Unfortunately, uh, generally reflowing it doesn't seem to work, which damages the panel. So I'm about to apply the tab shim. I've used some of this spongy kitchen uh, cleanup sponge um, and wrapped some duct tape around it. So what I've done is I've taped my shim to the frame uh, because I tried putting the shim on there and then putting the frame over. It's very difficult to. Uh, line that up properly without potentially damaging the LCD panel which is very fragile. As can be seen I've applied the bond to the panel now all I'm going to do is screw it down. Yeah this technique of taping it to the frame seems to work better than a lot of other techniques. Um, uh, don't tape it to the LCD panel itself because obviously it would then be visible on the screen. Uh, but yeah it's working now. Um, so only time will tell how this repair will go. Some people seem to have more success using the thermal pads. I didn't have any of that material available. So. Okay, so I've assembled everything. This now this is the panel module as such. Um, with all the boards on top of it. And it's quite a nice design in some ways. Because you can test it like this. With the frame. The front plastic frame. Outside the TV. So all you do is just lift the panel and just line it up and put it inside the frame and just make sure you don't damage that protect that uh, nice LCD panel you just fixed. Power light, let's turn it on, it's upside down at the mirror. Now we can see the screen working, a little up. You can see the relatively poor contrast ratio of this uh, crappy LCD panel. Yeah, oh, and very, very poor viewing angle. I don't know if it comes up on the camera, but yeah, that's a pretty awful viewing angle. So it's only a TN panel, you know. What you find in most computer monitors, really, and laptops, so cheap as chips, really, as cheap as you can get them. So, uh, you buy a good Japanese brand name like Sanyo and they whack shit parts in it. What can you do? But uh, then again, Toshiba, Sharp, and Hitachi, uh, and JVC, all four previously very well, good, very good uh, Japanese brands. I've now started reverting to doing Vestel rebadges. Luckily, um, uh, uh, JVC has decided it's not wise to continue as you're going to just ruin your brand doing that uh, because people are just going to realise your TVs are shit and no better than the junk at the supermarket like Alba and Bush and Goodman's and so on. Uh, and JVC just do, I think, just basically do high end projectors now. So. They decided they found a niche in the market, they can cover, they don't want to bother with selling TVs anymore, it's fair enough, it is a very competitive business. 
Just don't start rebadging shit, please. Really peeves me off. Bit asinine, but anyway. You see I've only put four screws in it. Um, that's because I'll probably take this thing apart and find I haven't plugged the speakers in or something or plugged them in the wrong way. Um, and that way it's easy to take the back cover off and we see any cables. But I'm just going to put this on test downstairs and we'll see how it goes. I'll post on the band kept net form if it's working or if it doesn't. So uh, that's how I put together a TV and how I fixed tab bonds on the TV on my single mattress in my bedroom, which is absolutely tiny. But luckily, new place coming soon should have a bigger room to work in.